Hey, Damone, obviously, you're a big talk of the town this week after your performance under the tackles. Your performance all season long, and, you know, all year coaches talk about you, you know, the improvements they wanted you to make, whether it be tackling the space, et cetera. But when you got that 18, how much did you, did you feel like, okay, this is something now that I have to live up to, or this is something like, the, I, not that you have to be something you're not, but you have to be kind of the best version that you have to be every day. Is, is that something that's real when you get that year? Well, um, every day, you know, I challenge myself to be the best version of myself that I can be. But um, when I, Back last year when I got number 18, I didn't I, mean, I didn't think that I was going to get 18, but I mean, I'm just, you know, thankful that, you know, my coaches and the players, you know, just voted me to wear number 18. It uh, really means a lot to me. And I, I mean, I know the history behind number 18. And I mean, I, like I said, I just got that to be the, be the best Damone Clark that I can be. Hey, Damone, this is uh, Josh Sibley with uh, Louisiana uh, Gridiron Football. Um, you're in your, your your third defense now with your third defensive coordinator. Um, right now, you're 23 tackles off from when Devin won the, the Butkus, and you're only six uh, solo tackles off from when uh, when he made that number. Uh, how does that make you feel knowing that you're having a season like him, uh, and you're pretty much uh, a little bit more than halfway through this year? Um, in my opinion, I mean, I think Devin is the best linebacker to walk through LSU. And um, just to, you know, be in the category with Devin really means a lot. But, I mean, I just continue to um, just get better each week, continue to uh, listen and harp on what Coach Baker tells me a lot because we, um, we watch film a lot. And, you know, he, he gives me small tendencies to look for. And, and when you go out there and play, you know, it's easy for you to see those tendencies and go out there and just play. Thank you. Thank you. I'm kind of, kind of piggybacking off of uh, Josh's question. There's starting to be a lot of talk about you. Hey, Devon Clark, deserve, you're leading the country in tackles. I mean, yeah, Devon Clark needs to be an, all, an All-American. Devon needs to be considered for the Butkus Award. Do you hear any of that? And I, I'm, I'm sure that's not your motivation. Obviously, you've been focused on a lot of other things. But do you hear any of that? And, and what do you think when, when, when you hear that? Do you, do you ever, could you think maybe how far you've come as a player? I mean, when, one thing Coach O always tell us is block out the noise. And, I mean, that's one thing that I do, block out the noise. You know, I'm I'm just focusing on helping this team get better. Um, we, we have a, a lot of good guys on this team. And, you know, as long as we all pulling on the same side of the rope, you know, everything else will take care of itself. But, I mean, I'm, I, like I said, I block out the noise. I'm, I don't be on social media. So, I, I mean, I don't, I don't see or, I mean, I don't see those things. Demond, uh, Coach O said yesterday in the Neil Farrell when he came back from his, you know, he came back a different cat is the phrase that he used. How did you see Neil uh, compared now to where he was before, you know, the 2020 season and up and out and all that? Uh, Neil has a, a lot of growth from um, when he had opted out. Uh, he was, you know, even when he did opt out, he still was uh, talking to guys like myself and Dre Daly. And, I mean, I'm, I'm proud of Neil, you know, proud of, you know, how how long, how far along he's come. Um, he's a great leader for our D-line. Um, that's another guy that you know you should uh, count on a lot because um, he you know he 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 works day in and day out just to continue to be the best Neil Farrell that he can be and like I said I'm I'm proud of him and I mean as long as I mean we, all we got to do is just keep doing what we are doing man and everything else gonna fall in line and take care of itself. One more other question about one of your teammates. We obviously just got to talk to Max. How have you seen him evolve as a quarterback over the last eight games? Wait, repeat your question. Yeah, how have you seen Max evolve as a quarterback over the last eight games? Oh, I mean, like he said, um, he wishes a, a few turnovers that he can take back. But, I mean, it happens. That's part of the sport. But um, Max has evolved. Uh, he's been more of a vocal leader for our team and also the offense. And um, I'm proud of the way Max just continues to compete each day. No matter what happens, he, he still go out there and compete to the very end. Hey, Damon, we went and talked to uh, Coach Osbury yesterday uh, about your time in lab and you know, your improvements, et cetera. Two questions, I guess. Um, <laughs> rewind the clock and put yourself in your shoes when you were in high school. Did you see yourself having the success that you're having right now? And secondly, he said that it wasn't always, obviously, this easy for you and there were times when you were you know, struggling and question whether you wanted to stay there. How much of a, of, of a right decision was it because you were trying to fight through that? Because there was a lot of expectations to you, and I think a lot of people were disappointed in the way that you were playing, right? Probably yourself the most. So how much of 
much of, of I guess that internalized and, and, and you know improvement you realize that you need to do. Uh, I'm just thankful for my time at Southern Lab. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't be where I'm at without being at Southern Lab and just seeing the family aspect of how, you know, it's, it's one big family at Southern Lab. And I mean, we didn't have it easy there. Um, we went through uh, things my senior year of high school and um, it, it made me the person that I am today. But I mean, just thinking back right now, I mean, I, I never thought that I'd be in the shoes that I'm in right now. And I just, you know, every day, one of the first things I do when I wake up in the morning, just thank God for being in the position I'm in. Like no matter how good or bad it is, I still just thank God each day. On the biggest thing, just my family and uh, my mom, uh, my dad, just you know, just having my my family there for me each day. Because I mean, it was times when you know, I, it was when I first got here, it was a, a tough transition for me. I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you. I mean, just going through, you know, just being in college, you know, I'm being on your own, you know, not having your parents there, you know, they they here, but they not here, you know, because I'm on, you know, my my family has things to do, and, you know. And I, you know, I, that was I had to adapt to waking up without seeing my my parents in the morning. Just you know, just being there, and just you know, just guiding me to you know, being, just being on my own. And I mean, it's, it was tough, but you know, I just still thank my my uh, family and my parents each day just for you know, just keep pushing me. And even to this day, you know, I, they they just push me to this day just to keep going because you know, it's tough times, but tough times don't last long. So, I mean, I'm just grateful. Simone, um, we asked about your motivation after the game, and you said you have a one-year-old daughter. And I was wondering what fatherhood has taught you in this past year and how that has changed you as a person, as a player. Uh, yes, like I said, my one-year-old daughter, Dakota, that's my that's my biggest motivation. And even last year when things got tough for me, you know, I, you know, I could have walked away last year. I mean, I, you know, it was tough for me, and I just, you know, just continue just to think about, like, you know, who I have to provide for and just – Having to provide for my one, yo. Like I said, uh, Saturday, it just it just hit different. You know, it just it makes you want to go harder because you know if I don't do it, then who will? Um, how's balancing fatherhood with being you know a student, a football player, and how often do you get to see her? Uh, I mean, it all depends. Like since we have a bye week this week, you know, we uh, we're gonna fix LSU, and then that's one of the things that I'm gonna do this weekend or whatever days that you know we don't have to do things with football. One of the biggest things I do is just, you know, I just chill with my daughter and just, just spend time with her. Like one thing she like to do is watch B movie. So, I mean, I just watch B movie with her. Uh, we get ice cream, eat popcorn, like just small things like that. But like, uh, I, uh, during the week I hardly get to see her. But on the weekends, you know, especially when we play earlier games, after the games, you know, I, I go get her. You know, she comes to my house and then we just, you know, we just spend time together because these are times that I won't get back. You know, she's one year old right now. And I mean, each day is just like, I see she's just learning more and more every day. And I, I just remember like when she was little. You know all the lines to the movie now? Uh, yeah, I know most of them. I mean, every time I, every time I get it, I mean, I, I know one thing, if I don't want to run around the house, trashing my house up, turn B movie on. She's going to sit down and watch B movie. It's, it's going to, it's gonna keep our attention. I mean, I, mean, I, don't, I don't have no other choice but to sit there and watch it too. So, I'm, I'm, and I know most of them. And I'm just continuing to learn though. You, you and Ty have known each other for so long, and y'all both have a daughter. How do you find that that links the two of you? Like, do y'all talk about fatherhood a good bit? And how to raise a child, like in the midst of football? Well, you know, I have my uh, my father in my life, and Ty has his dad in his life. But I mean, we always, you know just give, you know, small points to each other. Like, cause my, my daughter's uh, older than his daughter is. So, I mean, there are things that, you know, that if he may not know, then if it's, you know, if he, if he don't ask his dad, you know, he know he can ask me. And I mean, that's, like I said, Ty, one, one of the first people I met in 2006 when I moved out here from Katrina. So, I mean, I just seeing his growth, you, you know, it's like I said, it hit different for him too. You know, it, it, uh, it's a different mentality you have to take when you have a child to provide for.